Hi there, my name is Rob Gentry. I'm here with Roly at NAM 2014, and uh, we're in booth 407 with the Roly Seaboard Grand. It's a, it's a keyboard instrument, sort of the evolution of the piano stroke keyboard. As you can see, it's laid out like a keyboard, but the material used is a silicon substance, so it's kind of squishy. You can sort of see, see that. Um, what makes this different, aside from its physical appearance, is the amount of expression you can get out of your hands playing it. So it's got polyphonic aftertouch and polyphonic pitch bend. Um, so maybe I'll give you a few examples of that. Um, so the polyphonic pitch bend, well, first of all, to say that each note you can bend from side to side, and it's, the sensor runs from up here all the way down there, so you can go or, and it's as like such, a built -in ribbon yeah, basically, it's kind of like a fretless piano in a way, I like to think of it, um, so you can do, that's a lot of the sound, it's easy, very easy to do sort of vibrato, obviously the fact that it's got polyphonic pitch bends means that I can hold that note, but bend, bend that note, or a third note, things like that. Um, and the aftertouch as well operates in a similar. So that one is, you can hear the, the harmonics are sort of coming in when the harder you press the key, but say I've got that held down, that held down. So it's unlike most keyboards, you know, aftertouch, you depress one harder and the rest of the keyboard goes crazy. You know, if you've got like an LFO, modulating the pitch, it's going to be, you know, the whole thing's going to be going, whoa. With so this. I, so I've seen the Harkin Continuum, which is, yeah, yeah. in concept, it's a, in the same ballpark. I mean, what makes this different from that? That's a fantastic instrument. For me, this is, any piano player can sit down at this and immediately play it. The Continuum, you've got a sort of, it's not laid out entirely like a piano. The white and black keys aren't spaced as they are on a regular keyboard. With this, you know, you've got... Um, you know, it's still got the same thing, so... I mean, I've not been playing this that long, and it's fairly easy to sort of get there. Play it all in tune. You know, you've got to be a little bit more on top of it than a regular keyboard, because the fact that you've got polyphonic pitch bend means that if you're not a bit... if you're not precise, you can sort of either be a little sharp or flat. You can hear that, it's all. So you want to get your technique? Yeah, like any instrument, if you want to master it, you've got to spend a little bit of time with it. But from, from a basic point of view, it's, it's a keyboard, you know, just with a ton of extra modulation. I mean, the, talking about the pitch bend and aftertouch, some, some keyboards sort of, you know, have polyphonic aftertouch, like the Yamaha CS80 in the past. Um, the thing that makes this extra special is just the material that you really, you know, you can feel, you can feel the, uh, oh, one thing to say, you can change sounds with this dial here. It's like nine o'clock, responds to different, you know. So it's not making any of this sound itself, it's controller, right? So what are you actually playing and how does it understand to deal with that data? Okay, yeah, so at the moment, for now, we've just got it hooked up to a laptop. We're controlling um, F-Expansion Fuser, um, which sounds pretty good. When these ship, we'll, um, it's going to include an inbuilt sound engine as well. So that's just kind of, it's, all, it's already in here, the chip is already in there. But just, as you can see, it's pretty thin and sort of, contained. So that's going to contain a uh, synth, so you can effectively rock up to a gig or wherever you are, jack cable into the stereo out, and you're good to go. So you don't necessarily always need to have the laptop with you. And will that be able to play, is that going to play its own format of instrument, or are you going to be able to run, you know, play other instruments in there? You'll have to do that externally if you want to access other VSTs, right? Yeah, yeah, it runs on, 
if you're just using it with a laptop, it can run on USB power. So it's just USB cable. So that's being powered by that at the moment. All we've got here is USB and a sustain pedal. You've got two other inputs for expression pedal. Um, you can change the polarity and stuff. It's very sort of ambitious. I mean, what, you know, we've heard the keyboard reinvented before. You know, what's the sort of, what's the, what's the USB? What, why this one? Um, well, for all the reasons I've explained, I mean, I've played a lot of keyboards. I mean, I'm a keyboard player, that's what I've always done. And I've never experienced anything like this. It's just, you know, polyphonic pitch bends. I don't think any keyboard can do that. You've got apps like Animu from Moog, and that's fantastic on the iPad, but there's no, yeah, there's no, I can't close my eyes and, you know. But I guess my point is, is if there's something that can, what, what other instruments can respond to that? Because if you think, oh, if only I could use my X, Y, or Z with it. You know? Okay, yeah, so we've got contact running as well. I mean, aside from keyboard players using it to control, you know, expressive leads or pads or other synth-based things, film composers, you know, you think how a string player modulates their instrument. It's not just sort of on and off. So you sort of dig in more. I don't have a, one of those samples right now, but just the fact that it's that tactile thing, like you're digging in, it's a physical, the gel, you can, you can feel yourself sort of digging into it as opposed to a bit of plastic, which I know in my experience, most um, aftertouch on keyboards is pretty much on or off. Like even, you know, really good controllers, their aftertouch is pretty lacking. It's, it's it just doesn't really, you don't really feel it. So does there need to be a, like a software layer to, to trans, because if you say, oh, I want to control this scripting parameter from the actual... Okay, so at the moment it outputs regular MIDI, but how it does that to enable the polyphonic aftertouch and pitch is that for each new, each new note, it picks a different MIDI channel. So whatever door you're running or sort of standalone thing, you need to set it up so it's got a certain amount of channels to enable. Like say you need to play five notes, you need five separate channels, one, two, three, four, five, and it will assign a voice for each. Think of it as like an analog polysynth. Right. It will sort of you take your note. You, Does it require a special protocol? That's what I'm trying to get at. No. So yeah. this, I mean, this is an 88 keyboard, so this is the flagship, right? Yep. There are plans for others. I can see some shorter ones over there. Yeah, there's, oh, that's gone. That's over there. Um, there's a 37 key one roaming. So I they're, get... they're being launched in March, those ones. Right. Um, starting at $2,000 and $3,000, respectively. And, yeah. So, I mean, where, what sort of people are you finding a, a, a guy getting excited about it? Um, it's been a really good response, and there's been a lot of good press recently. Uh, I was kind of started with Hans Zimmer, I guess. He's got two of them, I think, and did a spot on American TV uh, with them. So he's using, well, for his thing, you know. Um, we've met with quite a few different artists and other sort of film composers. So a lot of bands have expressed interest. Um, it's, yeah, slowly building up some good momentum, you know. So when you've got the internal sound, device on board, what yep. sort of specs is that going to have it, what sort of polyphony, you know, those kind of... Um, polyphony 16 yeah. notes, uh, not entirely sure about, uh, basically it'd be like standard two oscillator subtractive kind of thing, there'll be some samples, it should be able to load your own samples in, possibly some wavetable stuff, um, and a few effects like some, st you know, some basic things like reverb, delay, and enough, obviously, you know, it's right. a small chip, but enough well, to make uh, it sound. in terms of splits and layers and what have you, is that done external to the keyboard or...? Um, I'm not entirely sure the final thing about that with the internal synth. Obviously, as a MIDI controller, you can do anything. I mean, at the moment, sound like this, I've got bass, pad, uh, lead, yeah. But internally, um, not sure how that's going to pan out yet. Okay, is there a... Uh, do you think there's a need for a... Uh, Polyphonic aftertouch and polyphonic pitch bend protocol, so that everybody can join the party. Absolutely, yeah. And for example, there's a door called um, Traction that supports that, just the standard. Um, some of us don't, and hopefully we'll do in the future. It's it's definitely a part. We're working with some other people, um, like Roger Lynn, to sort of try and figure out how that yeah, can standard. be implemented. Yeah. And, and presumably. Uh, 
we need instruments that can accept that data and translate it and, and work in the right way, yeah, as well? Yeah, or you mean hardware is yeah, like... Or software instruments. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some things just work straight away, and there's a uh, Sonic Charge synth plant that we plug it straight in USB, just works through an ear cam, and yeah, it worked straight off. It was great, you know. It's a great um, synth, actually. It's, yeah, it's fantastic. And that, uh, will, that will accept the polyphonic pitch bend as well? That one doesn't, but uh, that's possibly planned. But the aftertouch, the polyphonic aftertouch, um, just straight away worked. Uh, so it's quite fun. So we're going to start seeing these. When is there a plan for mass production sort of later in the year? Um, yeah, they're shipping at the end of the year. Um, well, mid sort of October time, I guess. We've taken there's quite a few pre-orders already. Sold a number, so yeah. So we just need to see, start seeing some people playing them on TV, right? Pretty much, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm going to try and, when I get my live thing to incorporate this, I'll be using one as a sort of some lead stuff. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I imagine for the orchestral performer, you know, people are using large orchestral libraries, that, that's where it really comes to life. Absolutely, yeah. It's just, yeah, once you've got everything set up to sort of control all the different instruments, it's pretty powerful. A bunch of people that have been past the booth have been really excited about that particular thing. Sort of. There's nothing else that really has the tactile feel and the polyphonic thing. And can you can you set it up? I mean, because I remember with the Eigenhart, the the XY pitch bend was really sensitive to begin with. I mean, can okay. you set the can you set it up it's the different. sensitivity? Yeah, there's yeah. different curves, so it can be sort of just straight or sort of slightly, you know, bent. Just make it a bit easier for the novice to get into it. Yeah, exactly. And if you you know if it's if you're sat in front of your computer, this is your only controller. You can just turn off the pitch bend, so it just responds like a regular. MIDI controller, you know, so you're not worrying about things being out of tune or whatever, or maybe you don't don't even need that. I mean, definitely some people, the pitch bend aspect doesn't, they don't care about that. It's more the aftertouch. So everyone's got their own little thing, but you can tailor it to what you need it for, you know. Uh, what, I mean, what kind of demos are you doing here? Have you got a kind of a particular love patch that you kind of got, uh, or are you just riffing? Yeah, I'm just doing my thing, really. I mean, I quite like, I mean, having a pad sound sort of demonstrating the Bending between notes within, you know, within. You know, I, just I mean, from here it looks very flat, but there is some contour to it. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, it's it's a bit of an optical illusion. Some people are saying you know, it's hard to tell, and it does look. Kind of fuzzy. I mean, not just because I don't have my glasses on, but uh, it's yeah. The whole seaboard name—it's got the the keys sort of kind of like waves. Um, and yeah, you can close your eyes, and it's yeah, it's easy to feel your way, you know. And it's easy—you can still play sort of. You know, some people worry that you can't play fast enough and so the articulation is, uh, is yeah I mean I manage it so so what happens when you uh, dig a hole in it because we're getting a bit too enthusiastic <laughs> you get some rubber glue and fix it out like, it? um pour some beer on it and wipe it up um there's we've done yeah, pretty extensive testing, sort of, you know, machine just prodding it all day and heat gun. It's uh, it's pretty hardy. I don't, it's not it's not going anywhere any, anytime soon. And if anything, it's if you do spill some kind of liquid on it, all the sensors are encased and it's not going to get, you know, it's going to fare a lot better than a regular keyboard. Maybe not this dial. Keep it away from that. But uh, yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. Oh, pleasure. Thanks for having us.